Hello fellow traders. My name is Steve Gans and I've been a stock and options trader for over 30 years. I've taught stock and options trading for a number of companies as well. And I'm, I'm kind of, a, for many years, I've been a big fan of Option Strat and I really love the stuff they're doing. And I'm really pleased to say that uh, I'm going to be a contributor here at Option Strat, sharing some different trading concepts and ideas. Uh, keep in mind that everything I share here is uh, for educational purposes and um, take them for exactly that. So what I want to look at today is I want to look at a potential trade oh, in SPX. So this is a vehicle that I quite often trade. As many of you may know, um, the SPY, SPY, is an ETF that represents the S&P 500. And you can buy shares in the SPY, uh, and you can do options around SPY. SPX is a little bit different in that you can't buy shares of SPX. It's strictly an options trading vehicle. It does have some different benefits. Um, one of them being that there are some tax benefits to SPX. And again, I'm not gonna pretend to uh, give advice on that. But um, if you want to know more, you can do your own research on that. I believe it's called the 1256 rule, if I'm not mistaken. But um, again, that's, that's just something that you can look into if you like. But I prefer to trade predominantly SPX. It is a little larger vehicle. So it's 10 times the size of the SPY in what's called notional value. You'll see what that means here in a moment. But again, this is a trade that I'm kind of playing with here uh, today and might consider putting this on in the next few days. Um, and what I'm looking at here is I'm looking at the fact that the uh, SPX, and if you, again, want to equate this to SPY, just take 10% um, of this. So in other words, if I'm looking at uh, roughly a 4,100 likely resistance on the SPX, that would be a 410 resistance on the SPY. Um, and then to the downside, so I'm just looking again at 4,100 here, probably being some resistance here. And then on the downside, I'm looking at some support probably around this 3,800 range. So we're looking 4,100 to 3,800 is kind of the general range that I want to try to cover in any trade I would consider putting on. So let's go over to option strat. What I really like is um, I can now select that I want to do a neutral strategy. And this gives me a number of different possible neutral strategies. Now I am going to rule out the short straddle and the short strangle instantly because both of these um, are what's called naked positions. You're trading naked options, which means that they have um, uh, basically unlimited or largely unlimited risk to them. Um, so I, I personally steer clear of those in most cases. I like the vast majority of my trades to be what's called defined risk trades, where I know exactly what I'm in for from a risk reward standpoint. So it's uh, given me two different possibilities here. I was looking at about an April 17th expiration somewhere in there. Um, I, I might even go out, in fact, I probably will go out to see this AM right here in SPX. This is the monthly expiration. Uh, they expire in the morning, that's why it says AM. And the rest of these are all weeklies. So more often than not, the monthly expirations in almost any options contract will have a little bit higher liquidity to it. So I always like higher liquidity because that usually creates tighter bid-ask spreads. So I go out to uh, that point, the, uh, the 21st of April, and these are a couple options. Again, I'm ruling out the short straddle, short strangle. So I'm going to look at these two, and I tend to like... Um, while this is showing an iron condor here, it, it actually has built a butterfly as well. And the butterfly is, quite frankly, one of my favorite trades. It's, it's kind of the go-to that I tend to teach to most of my students. So if we open up this butterfly, and let me just show you really quickly what the difference between a butterfly and a condor is, because people tend to get lost in the, the names sometimes. So this is a butterfly where my short strikes that are sold in the center here are at the same point. They're at 4,000 in this particular case. All 
that's different. If this were a condor, I would change these like this. Now, all of a sudden, this is an iron condor. So that's, that's all the difference is, is uh, here we're selling a call spread, we're selling a put spread. They happen to be split apart in the center, in this case, by 100 points. Now, if I want to do a butterfly instead, all I need to do is bring those two shorts to the same location in the center, and now I have a butterfly. So what are the benefits of a butterfly over a condor? Well, one of the big ones in my mind is you have a much flatter, what's called T0 line. So I've got a much wider range that the market can travel through uh, when I have on a, uh, a butterfly. This one is slightly what we call a broken wing right now because you can see we're carrying a little more risk on the downside than we are on the upside here. Um, so let me just flatten that out here so that bull strikes are at 4,000. And I'm going to make this 75 point wings. And you can see here, it's really cool. Uh, well, depending on the level of service you have. So at the premium level of service, you get the volume bars here, which will show you how much liquidity is at each one of these locations. Again, you always want to try to trade uh, where you have significant liquidity. Now, fortunately, SPX is fairly liquid uh, across the board, so we have that in our favor here on an SPX trade. So what I'm looking to have happen here, let's just take this out. At expiration, this is what our P&L diagram would look like. So at expiration, we would have a max risk to the downside and the upside of $1,040 we would have a max reward of roughly $6,500. So it's a good reward to risk proposition from that standpoint. Uh, we can see where our break evens are, 3,900 and 4,060. So it doesn't totally cover that whole range that we were looking at, but I'm also not planning on being in this trade throughout the entire duration of the trade either. As I had mentioned, um, the way that I tend to trade these is I'll be getting out of this in probably a month, somewhere along those lines. So let's just take this back. And if we enter today, here is what things look like. This is what our PL curve looks like. Now this particular trade, we can see our Greeks up here. This particular trade has some negative delta to it, okay? What that means is that if the market drops, this trade is going to increase slightly in value, assuming that everything else stays the same. If implied volatility, et cetera, stays the same, uh, this trade is gonna gain a little value in a market drop. I'm actually okay with that right now because as most people know here in mid-March of 2023, our markets are more in a downtrend than an uptrend. They've had a few up days here, but in general, we're trending down more than up right now. So I like that aspect of this particular trade setup and configuration. So um, we, what I'm looking to have happen is once I enter this trade, I'm just looking for some time to decay here. Now you see this blue window in the background. That's, uh, some people call it a probability cone. It's a bell curve. These darker lines are standard deviation lines. And obviously the more time we add into this trade or the further we go out in time, there's a lot more things that can happen in our market. So that tent gets wider and wider as we go out further in time. But the other thing I want you to notice is look specifically at this dark green T0 line. That's the line that I really focus on in my trading. And so if I enter this trade here and I have basically zero p and I'm down a few bucks because I paid some commissions, and I look at this and I just watch that, and if the market stays or the underlying stays in a general range here, profitability is going to creep into this just through what's called theta decay. Uh, theta, if you're not familiar with it, you need to get familiar with it. It's one of the most important uh, concepts in options trading. But theta, it is a theoretical number that talks about how much money 
In this case, we would gain on a daily basis if nothing else about this trade changed. In other words, if implied volatility stayed the same, if the underlying didn't move around on us, we could expect to have potentially $15 a day uh, drip into the value of this trade. Again, these numbers are all mathematical, theoretical numbers. There's no guarantee of any of them. But they're the best we have to kind of get a reading as to how a trade is going to work and react over time. So in this particular case, I'm going to have $1,000 in maximum risk in one butterfly here. But what I'm looking to have happen is just have a little decay happen to where I can get out for a 10 to 15% profit in a couple of weeks. So if we take a look right now, this is showing us in dollars. This is showing that uh, out on April 4th, um, you know, if nothing else changes, we should have about $324 in profit in this trade. Now I can also change this to show percents. So that's about a 5% profit in this case. So I tend to shoot for personally kind of in the 10% range, 12% range, and it depends on the entry I get in the trade and how good my entry is, et cetera. So, you know, so I might be looking at needing to stay in this trade up until early April. Again, if nothing else about the scenario changes, if the market pulls back, I might be able to get out a little earlier and hit my 10%. If volatility drops, in other words, if some of the fear subsides in the market, look how quickly that brings profitability into this trade. So that's what we're really hoping that will have happen is that when we enter a trade, particularly a delta neutral trade, a trade that's more looking to trade uh, time and volatility than it is the direction of the underline, that's our ideal goal is that the volatility will drop after we enter. So that's the trade idea that I'm going to be looking at. I have trades like this on all the time. I may very well do something like this tomorrow. But if people are interested in a delta neutral trade, I would say this would be a good one to study. Paper trade it, study it, watch how it works, see what it does, look at it in different scenarios. And again, that's what's so awesome about option strat is I can come in and I can model up all sorts of things in here. And then I can quickly see, okay, well, if I get into this trade and the implied volatility spikes up on me, what's going to happen? I know right away, again, theoretical numbers, what is likely to happen on this trade in all these different scenarios. So I look forward to sharing a lot of different concepts and ideas with you, um, you know, over the coming weeks and months. And uh, hopefully this will help continue uh, people's educations on options trading in general and specifically how to use a great tool like OptionStrat.